We are back inside City Hall, and we're going to talk for a few minutes about the ongoing crisis in Haiti, one that has tens of thousands of Haitian Americans in New York concerned about the country's future following last Saturday's powerful earthquake. Rescue efforts have been ongoing, and the official death toll is now over 2,100, with thousands more injured. Aid has been slow to trickle in, and New Yorkers have been organizing to send supplies to the island. We'll tell you how you can get involved. Of course, all of this comes in the midst of intense political uncertainty in the aftermath of the assassination of the country's president in July. Joining me now to talk about all of this and more, we've got Assemblymember Rodney Bichot Hermelin. She represents parts of Flatmus, uh, Flatbush, Ditmus Park, and Midwood in Brooklyn. Thank you for being here. I know this is a very uh, difficult time. Thank you for having me, Earl, today. I saw some um, eye-popping estimates that over a million people on the island have been affected, including more than half a million children. Uh, you know, back-to-back -back earthquake followed by storms. We're not out of hurricane season yet. Uh, have you been in touch with uh, family and friends on the island? How are people doing? Uh, yes, first, Errol, I just want to say that I do represent the largest population in Brooklyn um, in a community called Little Haiti. So it's been quite an experience for all of us. Um, I and my constituents have been in touch with our families. Right now, my family is doing okay, but I know many people in the community um, are worried and know someone that has been affected either through death or through injuries. So we are working diligently, collectively across the city, across the state, and making sure that uh, the people of Haiti, in particular in their southwest region, uh, Le Cais and Jeremy, uh, the, the regions that were devastated the most, get, um, get some aid uh, and relief effort from medical teams. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, what would have already been a difficult crisis to deal with is even worse due to the recent assassination uh, of the president. Um, are, are relief efforts going to be done uh, more people to people and through international relief organizations? Where does the, the government fit in at this point? Well, you're right. Um, Haiti has endured so much challenges, so many challenges um, after the assassination of the president and not only having um, to deal with the worsening of the COVID-19 epidemic, which the U.S. aid had um, delivered over 500,000 uh, vaccines, and also having to deal with the tropical storm on top of the earthquake. So it's been very, very difficult. Uh, I have been, and we have been working with um, government. Um, the mayor has been such a big supporter of the Haitian American community. He has provided um, medical supplies, like hundreds and hundreds of, and thousands of med medical supply that we are preparing uh, to send over to Haiti. Uh, he has provided uh, a warehouse for us to receive all the donations coming throughout um, New York City. Our office has um, become a ground zero where we're getting all the donations from constituents from a local level and from a citywide and state level. Uh, we are working very closely in particular with um, a number of the NGOs uh, that the mayor had rolled out in his fund, which is the IET Community Trust, Capra Care, Hope for Haiti, Partners in Health, and, and local Haiti held uh, organizations. We are in constant communications with them and we're finding ways to deliver uh, the supplies. So th this is all about logistics as well. How do we get everything centralized? Um, as you heard, uh, also NYPD, all of their precincts are accepting donations and they're going to centralize it to one location to then send it off to Haiti. So we're doing a lot. We're working mm. with different entities throughout the city and the state. Okay, so that's good to know. So uh, we'll put that back up on the screen. Uh, people can make donations at their local police precinct. Everybody lives in one precinct or another, so there's always a place that you can go. Uh, your office in Brooklyn is also a, a central spot, as you mentioned. And I wanted to um, uh, urge people in part, because one thing we've learned over the years, um, the impulse to gather medicine and food and clothing and start shipping it overseas, it's a real uh, logistical uh, challenge uh, compared with just sending money to people uh, in groups that are on the ground and can sort of make best use of those resources. I wanted to urge people to consider uh, making a donation. Uh, and uh, the city has uh, allowed its website to be sort of a, a channel to get uh, funds to some of those organizations you were talking about, right? Yes, definitely. You know, although it is easier to now to, to send money 
Um, I think, you know, we want to certainly promote both ways of donating. I think people on the ground here in, in Brooklyn want to feel that they're donating and so they want to uh, contribute goods. But certainly uh, we are asking folks to donate to these organizations um, who are on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Uh, NYC.gov slash fund. Uh, and when you go there, there's a big splash page with a big uh, flag of, of Haiti, this, the city uh, site. Uh, and then you can pick which one, IET Community Trust, CapraCare, Hope for Haiti, Partners in Health, uh, the different groups that are, are doing things on the ground. What, what, what is your sense of um, when things will be stable enough that you and others may be able to actually visit Haiti? Well, you know, we don't have a sense yet. Um, right now, we did co-author a letter to President Biden asking the president to end deportation, raise the refugee admissions um, ceilings for Haitians, um, as well as um, continuing to offer humanitarian aid uh, in the form of food or COVID. We, we also asked um, the president that please, you know, as we get refugees coming to the shores, especially to the shores of Miami, do not send them away. Please do not send the Haitian people away. As you accept the Cubans, accept the Haitians as well. Um, so we're, we're trying to get that stabilized. Um, right now, also in the region where it was devastated, um, major roads and major bridges were collapsed. So as a result, um, we have to use different techniques to get the food, to get the services uh, to the people over there. We are doing a lot of airlifting. So once um, things are a little bit more stable, mm. um, Haitian American electeds and community leaders uh, will soon be on our way to Haiti to also aid. Okay. I, um, I'm going to make a financial contribution. I hope many of my viewers will, will do the same. Uh, while I have you here, before I let you go, there are rumors uh, that you might be tapped as uh, the lieutenant governor for Kathy Hochul when she ascends to the top spot. Is there anything about that you can tell us? <laughs> well, for one, I would say um, definitely whoever is inquiring should ask Kathy. Um, she will definitely make a decision on who she wants to be in second in command. Um, I am right now focusing on obviously my district, the Democratic Party making sure that's unified, but certainly I've been 100% on the Haiti crisis. Um, it's been nonstop. So we'll just see. There's a number of people who are qualified uh, for the position, and we'll see. We'll see who she selects. Okay, not ruling it out, though. We'll see. Not ruling it out. Not ruling it out. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll stay in touch, and uh, we'll wish you the best of luck on, on this uh, very big uh, project that all of us need to be involved in. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you so much, Errol. Okay, let's uh, take a break here. Coming up next, with Kathy Hochul set to become governor next week, she has promised a new working relationship between the state and the city. But will she be able to deliver? We're going to talk about that and much more with this week's Reporters Roundup.